Welcome in TNC Radio Live. This is Tail Lights with Larry and Angie Bomb. So happy to have you in tonight, and Larry and Angie have a guest, Pamela Bryant. And Larry, I'll, Angie, I'll let you all take it from here. Thank you so much, Tom. This is Angie, and I'm with Larry. I'm Larry. <laughs> Still Larry. Still Larry. And we have a special guest tonight, Pamela Bryant, and we want to welcome her. And she has got a cute little Texas accent. You want to say hi, Pamela? Hey, everybody. Rocky Top Texas Trucker 01, Pamela Brandt. <laughs> we actually met on TikTok. We were following each other's videos, and that's how uh, we kind of met. And uh, it was I had no idea that you had been in trucking so long, so I thought it was so interesting. But if you want to tell everybody a little bit about yourself. Well, I've been doing it for 46 years years oh my at, the goodness. Age, at the age i'm 63 years old guys i was born in 59 at the age of 17 i grew up in windthorst texas it's uh hour out of the falls on highway 281 south of the falls wichita falls for those of you that don't know texas talk <laughs> and uh <laughs> I grew up on a dairy farm, Berin Brothers Farms. Uh, yeah, I grew up driving a truck. My daddy was a trucker. My mother was a trucker. And uh, I, was, I was wondering I, if that's how you got into trucking is, is if you grew up on a farm. I had a feeling. Yeah, I, I grew up in a John Deere and, and graduated to a truck. I had a farm card. You know, which meant I could drive anywhere in the state of Texas at the age of 17 to the age of 19. Oh, wow. And I then, never even knew about that. Yes. Then I went to a company called AMPI, American Milk Producers, Inc., and I drove a milk tanker. Yeah, there are some stories there. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what's, what's the craziest story you have been when you were driving a milk tanker? Well, I hadn't been driving very many days. And, of course, you have to back up these little driveway trails to a milk barn. I got backed up and got my milk, and I was headed down the highway, down I-35, headed down towards Oklahoma, and all of a sudden, I hear whoop whoop, see light, see something sparking. Highway Patrol, you know Oklahoma Highway Patrol. We know him as whoops. <laughs> he comes to the door and he's like, "Little girl, you need to come out. I got something to show you." Okay, I walk back there, and I had been dragging two teeth posts. In the farmer's wife's laundry and clothesline. Oh. Sparks flying. <laughs> Sparks flying <laughs> for about 20 miles. I kid you not. Oh my gosh, I'm so bad. I can like visualize that. <laughs> I, the next day, I had to turn around and drive back and pick up laundry and take, you know, post hole diggers. And and I'm five ten, and at the time I don't think I was 120, 25 pounds at the time. <laughs> Re reset that clothesline, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you want to learn how to back a truck? But, you know, there's you a way to learn how to back a truck, guys, ladies. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. So, so you, I know that you are now a fleet owner, and you have uh, five trucks underneath you, and your children drive for you. Is that correct? My sons and my, well, I have a set of twins, a boy and a girl. There are thirty-eight, Kelly and Kelly and Kenneth, and we own. They're driving. How do I start this? My first truck, Daddy gave me was one of his used trucks. I, it was in 1979, and he handed me the keys to his 69 white Freightliner. Mm -hmm. That was my first truck. Then along come the husband, you know, and things and children. 
and John and I bought an 85 359 Peterbilt. My oldest boy is driving that now, still to this day, hauling livestock under the Berin Brothers Farms, Texas. We also I acquired, John and I did, four 75 Freightliner Classics. The, my children drive those under Berin Brothers. I, after 27 years, I bought some Pro Stars from Heartland, and I'm leased to Heartland. That's I've worked awesome. really hard. I lost my husband, and I lost my dad. So that's why I hooked on to a company. I had children to raise, you know. Oh, absolutely. And how a long woman have you been with Heartland? 27 years. Wow. Please, okay, that's all awesome. of you, please, if any of you get by Atlanta, my terminal's Atlanta, also North Liberty, stop and come in. My picture's on the wall. I'm Heartland's oldest female driver. I've been driving the longest for Heartland. That I is drove, amazing. I drove for Mr. Jardin, not Michael Jardin, Mr. Jardin. <laughs> I, I truly listen, get guys, well, Go ahead, I'm sorry. No. There when I say Mr. I gave him my utmost respect and because I can't say something nice sometimes, I just won't say anything at all. How's that? That is a good philosophy. <laughs> if only more people use that philosophy. <laughs> I'm a Texan. Yes. <laughs> oh, so I was going to say, as long as you have been out here in the industry, I mean, especially as a woman, you are a true trailblazer. What do you think has been the biggest change that you've seen in the trucking industry? Mm. Because now I'm also a driver manager. I can see so many things. So many things. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm going to upset a lot of people tonight. But women, don't let anyone tell you you can't drive a truck. Don't do Absolutely. it. It's, it was hard. I can tell so many things, guys. I have stood in line with a can of change, waiting on a payphone, pushed and shoved and spit on. The men yeah. have changed. The men have changed. That's what's changed. They've grown up. Yeah. They, they have grown up to allow us to take our place side by side to respect I, us. I could not agree more with you. I could not agree more. And that's right where you ladies need to be. We have done the same thing, except please take into account sometimes we have that little monthly visitor, if we're allowed to say it. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes we are pregnant. Sometimes we have a lot of things going on that men don't have going on. That men don't yet, understand. Yet we are still pulling into places that really don't have names, that only had cafes and they were mud holes, like Little America, Wyoming, and we are sharing electric cords. Oh, if I could only tell you awesome things. <laughs> tell us, please tell us. I've been that little gal that's been under the truck, wrapping fuel filters, shoveling snow around the truck, praying stuff didn't freeze up overnight, staying up all night so she'd run so she wouldn't. Uh, don't make me cry, guys. <laughs> I see oh. all these new truckers. I'm so proud to be a part of that. I'm so proud to be a part of that. Absolutely. And, and we are so proud of you. 
Oh, and I was going to say it's because women like you, they're the trailblazers that there's more women coming into the industry because we see what you do and we see, hey, this woman can handle it in this male dominated field and she's out there not only making a living, but now she's a fleet owner and look, look at what she's doing. And that's why I think there's more women coming into this industry. And, and I really wish we could all come together company driver owner operator you know and and i want to i don't want to use that one term outlaw because i can tell you if it wasn't for the outlaw trucker god love them we'd be nowhere some Very people true. don't we really wouldn't and i know what i'm talking about if yeah, some of absolutely. these drivers if some of these drivers didn't take the chance, didn't take the risk, didn't drive into the storm, where would we be? That's very true. Didn't always follow the rule. I'm not condoning it. I'm not saying do it. Just respect them, okay? Absolutely. Absolutely. As, as a company okay, driver... We'll be right back. You're listening to Tail Lights with the Bombs, and we'll be back with Pam in just a moment. Truck drivers face many challenges in their career, and finding safe overnight truck parking is one of those challenges. After the tragic murder of truck driver Jason Rivenberg, Jason's law went into effect to help protect the thousands of truck drivers who need to find safe overnight parking. Although Jason's law was put into place to help drivers, safe truck parking continues to be an issue for truck drivers across America. We've put together a list of tips that'll help you make the process of finding safe overnight parking easier for you. Plan your trip. Pre-planning your trip is something every truck driver should consider doing. Not only does it allow you to map out your overnight parking, but it allows you to map out where you can get fuel and food. Before you hit the road, take a look at your route. Avoid scheduling truck parking in high crime cities or congested areas. Pro tip. Download the app Truck Park. With over 200 secure locations, the Truck Park app allows drivers to schedule their overnight parking in advance, so drivers don't have to worry about driving around to find a parking spot. Not only is it a relief to have your parking spot booked, but it's also more productive with HOS. Also, if you're a member of the Truckers Network, drivers get instant access to a 15% off promo code to use when booking a parking spot with TruckSpot. You can sign up for just $5 a month. Park early. If you don't choose to reserve your parking spot through Truck Park, we suggest parking early. The majority of safe parking spots will fill up quickly before it gets dark. If you can, start driving early in the morning so that when it's time to quit driving for the day, you won't find yourself fighting for a parking space. Park in a well-lit area. Walmart parking lots are an extremely popular location for overnight parking. Why? Because they're well-lit areas. When planning your trip, it may be difficult to know whether they have well-lit parking available. If you find yourself in a situation where you don't feel safe, talk to your dispatcher. They might be able to help you find secure truck parking. Lock it up. It may seem like a no-brainer, but you'd be surprised as to how many truck drivers forget to lock up their truck and trailer for the night. So before you go to sleep for the night, make sure to lock everything. Insert a dash cam. Dash cams are a great way to provide evidence if your truck was in an accident or vandalized. It's always refreshing to know that you have an extra set of eyes on your truck. This blog was brought to you by the Truckers Network at app.thetruckersnetwork.net. Don't forget, you can hear all of our TNC Radio primetime shows again on our podcasts. Just go to tncradio.live slash podcasts or search for tncradio.live wherever you listen to podcasts. 
Hot Shot Secret. We share the science behind common diesel problems. For example, diesel fuel cetane levels. The cetane rating in diesel fuel is 42 to 45. Most diesel engines operate more efficiently with a cetane rating of 48 to 50. One treatment of Hot Shot Secret Diesel Extreme will raise your cetane 7 points, increase fuel economy, and improve cold starts. Hot Shot Secret Diesel Extreme is available nationwide at truck stops, fine farm and auto stores, and online at hotshotsecret.com. Hot Shot Secret. Powered by science. Welcome back to Tail Lights with the Bonds. I am your host, Angie, and I'm here with my husband, Larry. <laughs> Larry. <laughs> And we've been speaking with Pamela. Pamela is a female truck driver for the last 46 years, and we've been getting some great stories from her. So one of the questions we discussed during the break, Pamela, and I thought it was a great question, was, you know, there's a lot, you've seen a lot happen throughout the trucking industry. You know, what are some of the changes you would like to see happen in our industry? Things that I would like to see happen... Oh, gosh. Uh, Right off the top of my head. Limiters. Limiters. As a driver, trainer, driver, manager, please, please, if Heartland can hear this, I've had a discussion with them. Do not put a new driver in a truck such as an international LT and put a thing on it that not just makes it drive slower in Atlanta, but when it comes up too close, let the driver decide if it's too close. Do not automatically reduce its speed where in Atlanta they're cutting it off and endangering the driver, and not just that driver, but other drivers around you. Oh, that is such a good point. I, I, I do not like the feature on the new on the new trucks. I have that. I don't like it myself. And it all it all is about dollars and cents, not drivers. But it's not the right dollars and cents. And those new trucks, because of insurance, insurance and dollars. Yes, I get all the automatics. When we took on Millis Transfer, they all had bought automatics because of their insurance you know it it it's let it be the driver's choice please put it back in our hands let us choose what we want to drive i agree if I, and I, i've been driving 46 years i don't have carpal tunnel i don't have an elbow that's bad or a knee that's bad or a shoulder that's bad so why do I need an automatic? If you like an automa- if you want an automatic, praise God. Our job as a trucker is to make sure that load gets there. It's delivered in a timely fashion. We're polite. We're kind. My daddy taught me one thing as a trucker. That round steering wheel sees no race, no religion, no gender, none of that. It sees the need of the people. You have one job and one job, and it's to fit. It's to fulfill the need of the people. And if you can't do it, don't sit in the seat. I agree with you. So since you've been driving for so long, have you uh, had the opportunity to train any drivers? I have trained 2,311 drivers. I have trained 2,000. Now think about that. 2,000. And only 116 of those were women. I have put over 2,000 men to work. Me, that's a little a, Texas girl. Heartland okay, keeps so all those records. It's, you know, public records. Well, I, I was going to say, I bet you you've got some stories of some of your training. <laughs> like I say, years ago, in 1995, Mr. Jardin is was the original owner, is still is the owner of Heartland Express. 
we didn't have the terminal at, on Hollowell Drive, you know, exit 12, which, you know, everybody hates Atlanta, but it's my terminal. <laughs> it's 285 South, you know, exit 12, if you've ever been to the Petro, we're the opposite direction. Anyhow, it was at Forest Park. If any of y'all know where Forest Park is, I'm sure you do if you've been to the Walmart, D.C. <laughs> He gave me a 95 W900. No, she wasn't tethered, guys. I was coming in hot. I get me a ticket. I show up. Mr. Jardin says, what's the matter, little girl? I thought I got me a ticket. Like a $200 ticket. Biggest ticket ever got in my life. He said, hand it here. Handed it to him. He gave me $114 to pay the ticket. He said, I'd rather pay you for being on time than sitting on your behind. <laughs> that. <laughs> okay, that was awesome. Now, that's that's <laughs> that. <laughs> he was awesome. I don't know what's happened along the way. I, you know, the, our, my company, I don't want to promote it a lot because that's not what I'm on here. Uh, if I can help one driver, one driver, let me know. I'm, I, 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 I'm not saying I know everything, you know. I'm very old school. Just trust me. That, what, what would be like your one main advice? To get the driver that is driving right now. Patience. Patience. That is a great I have one. so many I have so many that are like wanting to start making that money today. They want shortcuts. They don't want to earn what's taken some of us years. Driving a truck is a lifelong experience. Every day I learn something. Every day. What? My husband Larry had told me, because he, he actually trained me. And he always told Did me, he goes, yeah, he goes, he goes, the day that you think you're anything in the trucking industry is when you need to hang up your keys. He goes, if you're not willing to learn every day, the truck driver, then you have no business being a truck driver. Now, what did you train him? What did you to teach him? <laughs> to be a good husband. <laughs> to be a good husband. There's times I've had to teach team drivers, and I've walked away, you know, thinking, that couple ain't going to make it. <laughs> that couple ain't going to make it. And years uh -huh. later, 30 years later, they come back to me, and they're still together. And I'm like, oh, God, God love them. Love them. Our first two years, I didn't think we would make it. No, I didn't. Now I think we could do this forever. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's hard back breaking work. Just be patient. Just be patient. That is such, that is such good uh, advice because it's so true, especially the line of work that we deal with and having to deal with, you know, the people that we deal with and the traffic and four wheelers. Patience is a good piece of advice. Well, I was I was living in Texas, working out of the Siegelville, which we do Burleson now. And they asked me in 2014, "Can you come to Atlanta?" And I'm like, uh, "Y'all lost your minds now." <laughs> so I looked around, <laughs> and I noticed Cleveland, you know, on the 75 corridor, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. I said, "How about how about Cleveland?" So the daughter and I, Kelly, who drives, drove for Heartland, too, at the time, she said, Mom, let's go to Cleveland, Tennessee. It's right by Chattanooga. I do my little TikToks at exit 20 at the pilot. And we've not had a bit of problem. So that's where the Rocky Top, I fell in love with Tennessee. Oh, isn't Tennessee beautiful? Tennessee. Oh, honey, being a Texan. Who could not love the volunteer state? Yes. They came and oh helped Texas. They came and helped Texas in some of our darkest hours. Who could not love Tennessee? <laughs> that is so true. So, 
just be grateful for every day. That's all I can tell you because you're riding around on 200 gallons of diesel fuel. Oh. I say, I as a fleet owner, I'm sure that the de- rising diesel prices have been a concern for you. Uh, I don't even want to go there. I've my sons have can't learn to call me the. Uh, I don't want to tell you, uh, <laughs> <laughs> because every day I have to complain. You know, have to deal with because it's my children. You know, tires and fuel and really, do you need to go here? Do you need to go? I I know now why companies dry, uh, companies are pulling their hair out. You know. Because it's about to turn me into witchy poo, as some of my, you know, kids call me. I've turned into this person they don't know. <laughs> it, I, I, this country, we need prayers bad, y'all. We need prayers bad. If y'all believe in God, you need to get on your knees. Oh, that's so true. I, it's so true. I don't know what's happened to this country. I don't. Uh, we're supposed to be getting better and getting along, you know. I come from the generation of Martin Luther King. What happened? Okay, we'll be back in just a few minutes with our guest, Pamela. You're listening to Tunes with the Bombs. Mondays at 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Central, right here on TNCRadio.live. Hi, I'm Dr. Christopher Cortman, and now for the Mental Health Minute. I had a patient who went into her primary care physician's office and started to cry when she talked about something. And before she could even finish the topic, he was writing a script for her for an antidepressant. She complained to me and said, I'm not depressed. I was appropriately sad over something in my life, and I wish he had understood that. So, what's the difference between sadness and depression? First of all, to qualify for a clinical depression, you have to have a bunch of symptoms for a minimum of two full weeks. You can't have a bad day or a painful weekend and call it a clinical depression. What are those symptoms? Well, I want to tell you about two of the most important symptoms that will help you understand whether you have a depression or not. The first one is dysphoria. And that means down in the dumps, low mood, melancholia, just feeling depressed. Can't get out of bed. Don't feel good about anything. Hate how I'm feeling. Again, that's not just sad because you lost your dog or because your friend's moving away. That means I feel bad all over in my life. Kind of a global feeling of low and blue. But the second most important symptom is called anhedonia. What is that? That simply is the loss of pleasure in the usually rewarding activities. Anhedonia means not Hedon, hedonistic is eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. When you don't want to do the things that you normally would do, and someone says, come on, let's go golfing, or there's a great movie, or guess who's coming to town, we got tickets. No, I don't want to do anything. That's anhedonia. I don't get joy or pleasure. If you have those two symptoms for at least two weeks, now we're talking about a clinical depression. And that's when you should get some professional help. For the latest in Houston traffic, weather, news, and information, don't miss the evening surge on TNC Radio. Live. For the latest in rideshare and gig economy news, visit uberliftdrivers.com. That's uberliftdrivers.com. Welcome back to Taillights with the Bombs. I am your host, Angie. And I am still Larry. (laughs) And we are here with our special guest, Pamela. And Pamela, I had a question for you. 
So you've been, uh-huh. I know you've been in the trucking industry for about 46 years, and we kind of discussed a little bit about how we're starting to see a lot more women coming into the industry. What piece of advice would you have for a woman who may be interested in becoming a truck driver? Do it. Do it. It's more, it, it's more fashion towards women. Men are more, you know, uh, uh, accustomed to it now. Uh, men, uh, men are more willing to marry into a team. Matter of fact, I think it doesn't, uh, the Federal Motor, don't they have a statistics about how married couples that drive together stay together now? Yep. So, yep. I, I mean, in, in women, it's a secure job. It's a Absolutely. secure job. It's it's something that's gonna be there every day. We we need food, clothes, medicine, you know, cars, everything, everything. Why wouldn't you do it? I say do it. Absolutely. I'm kind of thinking. I'm thinking there's some women that are just out there like me. Uh, we're friends on TikTok and other things throughout the other companies. There's a band of us. Don't let us down, girls. Don't let us down. <laughs> well, speaking of TikTok, before I forget, do you want to tell everybody how they can find you on TikTok, what your name is there on TikTok? I am Rocky Top Trucker Texas 01. Rocky Top Absolutely. Texas, or Rocky Top Trucker Texas 01. Now, is yes. it Texas or just TX? TX for Texas. Perfect. That way everybody I, can I, find you on TikTok. <laughs> right, a rocky top, because I moved from Texas to here. I am a natural born, not generation. I, I argue with mom because I had a brother born in Oklahoma. We almost thought that didn't count, but, you know, she was born <laughs> in Texas. So, yeah, don't say nothing. <laughs> But I, I, I was going to ask you. So I, you know, as long as you've been in the trucking industry, what has been the funniest thing that you've seen while you've been over the road? Oh God, there are so many things. So many things. Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to just put it out there. Troopers, troopers. <laughs> they have evolved finally. <laughs> have evolved from the most ridiculous how do I say it without being tacky <sighs> you know the old Smokey and the Bandit how we perceived mm-hmm. the hardcore as a woman you uh, how do I say this as a woman being pulled over by a state trooper or local yokel, local law Sometimes wasn't very pleasant. And yes. I think that's all I need to say, right? Yep. yep. <laughs> they, they wanted you to do things that really was very inappropriate. Right. And now with all the training that's in place and laws that are in place, women are safer. Don't you think? Oh, absolutely. Just That's with our law enforcement. Yeah. And I, I have noticed a big shift, I would say, in the last five or six years, too, amongst the truck drivers. I think truckers are way more accepting of women. Um, and they definitely are there to help out when needed. So, you know, I, I, as a woman truck driver, I definitely feel safe out here. Well, used to, you didn't want to walk to the car when a trooper... Mm-hmm wanted you to go to the car you knew not to but the power a trooper had over you a state officer was not right i am sure glad that that has changed i'm very happy it's changed but it's taken like you say i'm 63 my generation grew up with martin luther king we grew up mm-hmm. with Title Nine. You know, where when we played ball, you didn't get a credit for it. The boys did. 
<laughs> my generation, you know, now we do. Because, you know, protests and things. I am right. the generation that gapped it all, the 60s, you know. the. I just hope we all carry on to make it all safe for all the future, you know. Let's all get along. Just let's all get along. That's so true. So what what has been one of your scariest moments being out here as a truck driver? Good God, y'all. This is hard. You got to think I've been doing it almost 50 years. Uh, <laughs> scariest. That's scariest. Scariest, scariest. Oh, good grief. Give me a second now because there's so many. <laughs> uh, Oh no 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 no! I I would. Oh, go ahead. I can think of one that really jumps out at me, and that is where they try to roll barrels out in front of you and do things to get you to stop. Oh you my know, goodness! You have girls. Sometimes when you go to shippers or receivers, mainly shippers. Some places, they want to try to separate you from the truck. It's very scary. Don't do it. Stay in the truck. Get you a yeah. damn safety. Excuse me. Get you a CB radio. Call security. Do whatever. Call your dispatcher. Question. This person wants me to get out. He says my tail lights out. He says this is wrong. He says that's wrong. I need to come look at this or look at that. Don't you believe it in a heartbeat? Okay. Don't yes, go with them to walk. Advice. Don't go with them to walk anywhere. Okay. Always be aware of your surroundings, what you're doing, who you're with. Okay. Yeah, I always tell all my females that are coming into the industry, I always say keep your head on a swivel and do not keep your face in your phone because that's when you're the most vulnerable. When you're looking at your text messages or you're looking at your phone and you're not paying attention to your surroundings, that's when you're the most vulnerable. Well, and I'm going to tell you too, when Heartland acquired interstate trucking, you know how long interstate was around, right? We grew mm -hmm. up with the interstate, the orange, the green. Yep. It was sad. It was sad, y'all, to see those truckers all because, you know, the borrowing money, borrowing money and couldn't pay it back, couldn't pay it back. And then Heartland, you know, talked to them and bought them out. And, oh, it was pretty sad. And how do I say this? I don't even know if I can say it now, you guys. Uh, I don't know if I can even say it. Can we flip something else? Because I'm about to cry. Absolutely. Yeah, we don't want you crying. We don't want you crying. <laughs> These were hard-working trucking people that didn't deserve it because management went bad. Yeah, it, we've seen it a lot. We can, we can flip it around, and what's your funniest story? <sighs> funniest, funniest, funniest. Funniest, funniest, funny. Oh, funniest story. I delivered a baby. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes, tell us about that. Absolutely. In a Swift, in a Swift truck. <laughs> <laughs> Little gal was sick, and she didn't know what was wrong. She was in labor. <laughs> And they couldn't find another. I, I was in Mobile, Alabama. And the girl's like, I don't know. I think I'm sick. And I got, I was like, ma'am, can you help me? And I got up there and she was crowning. She was delivering. Did she know she was pregnant? <laughs> no. She was a real young girl, y'all. She, It was his wife or girlfriend. And he was like, I don't know what's wrong with her. And I'm like, I'm telling you what's wrong with her. <laughs> He said, "Does she have the?" He's like, "Does she have the flu?" And I said, "She got the baby bug." Is what she got. <laughs> oh my goodness! Okay, that's incredible. That is incredible. <laughs> Are we about done? Almost, almost. You're doing great. Yeah. <laughs> 
right back in just a few minutes. You've been listening to Tail Lights with the Bombs. I'm sorry. As a professional driver, the engineers at Frontlane know that you remain focused on the road regardless of weather and traffic conditions. That's not always true of the drivers behind you. Every nine minutes, another commercial vehicle is rear-ended by a driver failing to control their speed. And guess who gets the blame? When you have to brake quickly, Tailbone illuminates a series of bright red LED lights that allow the driver behind you to react up to 50% faster. Using amazing accelerometer technology and a battery that will last for years, Tailbone meets the standard set by the NHTSA and the FMCSA. Learn more by visiting www.frontlane.com slash tailbone. That's www.frontlane.com slash tailbone. Approved in all 50 states, it's Tailbone by Frontlane. This blog is brought to you by the Truckers Network at app.thetruckersnetwork.net. The dark side of the long-haul trucker lifestyle. A trucker's lifestyle can be a gloomy place at times. The long days, stressful work environments, and loneliness have major effects on a driver's life. The dark side of the long-haul trucker's lifestyle is often overlooked and not addressed. As a result, many drivers suffer from mental and physical health problems. Before entering the trucking industry, long-haul truck drivers need to be aware of the good and bad that comes with this lifestyle. It's difficult to stay healthy. Being in good health is a rare thing for long-haul truck drivers. Life on the road doesn't give drivers many opportunities to live a healthy lifestyle. When you spend the majority of your trucking career on the go, your food options are limited. Although taking an exit to get McDonald's may seem like an easy solution or the easiest option, eating fast food for every meal for weeks at a time can cause serious health issues. Obesity is one of the most common health issues in truckers. If you don't watch your diet and exercise, you could end up developing a serious health problem. Say goodbye to a regular sleep schedule. The trucking industry runs 24-7, 365, so having a regular sleep schedule is rare for long-haul drivers. The loading and unloading times are often never the same. At times, the driver will deliver a load at 2 a.m. one day and 1 p.m. the next day. In addition to the inconsistent load times, drivers can make multiple deliveries a day. This creates a lot of stress on the body and leaves the driver operating on a few hours of sleep. If you're struggling with getting enough sleep and staying awake on the road, check out our blog, Five Easy Steps to Help Truckers Stay Awake While Driving. You'll feel lonely. It's not uncommon for long-haul truck drivers to feel lonely while on the road. Drivers have very little face-to-face -face interactions while working on the road. While this may seem like a good thing for some drivers, it can start to develop depressive symptoms. Depression is a common side effect of trucking. To help avoid feeling depressed on the road, talk to your friends and family on the phone at least once a day. As a long-haul truck driver, you can often feel like you're missing out on your loved one's life. Communicating with them daily will help you feel less lonely. It's hard on your relationships. Long-haul trucking can strain your relationship with your significant other. Being away from your loved one for weeks at a time is never easy. In addition to being apart, many drivers struggle with balancing their work life and personal life. Relationships already take a lot of work, but long-distance relationships take even more work. When you become a long-haul truck driver, it's important to be willing to put an extra effort into your relationship. Some quick tips to having a healthy relationship as a long-haul truck driver. Communicate daily. Spend as much time together as possible when you're not working. Consider therapy. Avoid arguments. Trust each other. This blog has been brought to you by the Truckers Network at app.thetruckersnetwork.net. For the latest in traffic, weather, and information, catch the Morning Grind weekdays right here on TNCRadio.live. Don't miss Marcia Campbell, North America's trucking sweetheart, Thursdays at 6 p.m. Central on TNCRadio.live. Back to Tail Lights with the Bombs. I am Angie and I'm here with my hubby Larry. 
And we just wanted to remind you guys that you can find us on Facebook. We are Married to the Road and also on TikTok. And then we also have our truck and safety info where we have all of our weather and traffic information for our truckers and RVers. But we're talking tonight with our special guest, Pam. And Pam, I was going to ask you, um, what all have you driven? Have you? I know that have you driven flatbed and reefer, and what all have you driven? I know you said you drove everything. Everything. I have driven everything: flatbed, step deck, extended deck, twin shift, double shift, dub, uh, you name it. Thirty. I'm in a thirteen speed now. I'm on Heartland in Atlanta. They have 25 trucks called the AT1 board. We do a little bit of heavier hauling than the, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> We're 25 trucks on the AT1 board. You must have 15 years experience with Heartland and it's a 13 speed KW. It is a team truck. Even though we don't have a team, it's our largest KW. And you usually are going to haul something heavy. I get a lot of times uh, Lynchburg. I get to haul Jack Daniel, and she's heavy. Sometimes <laughs> around 84,000. Oh, yeah, I can imagine. Uh, we get special. Oh, Cumberland Gap, Black Mountain, you bet she is. I don't care if it's a moon, I'll drive it. I'll drive it. Like I say, my son's driving my 85 359 Pete. That's Sundown. Sundown is an 18 speed. She used to be a little bit bigger girl, but we reeled her back a little bit. Because, you know, it's harder to get parts, y'all. Oh, yeah, especially in the older ones. Absolutely. Well, and I've if y'all are listening and you need some, there's a place in Chickamauga, Georgia. It has a good graveyard to go digging in, trust me. Chickamauga, Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you know, us old women, we know where some stuff's at when you really want to shop. Exactly. Uh, exactly. <laughs> well, Pam, it's awesome uh, having you on the show, but I wanted to make sure that you told everybody again where they can find you because we are, both of us are new to TikTok, and I want everybody to get a chance to follow you. So what is your username on TikTok? Rocky Top Trucker Texas 01. Pamela awesome. Brandt. Do you have a Facebook page? Pamela Brandt. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> That's her Facebook page. <laughs> yeah. I really appreciate you coming on here. And and for all you guys listening, she was a real trooper because she came on last minute for us. We really appreciated it. And it's so nice to talk, talking to another woman who's been in the industry as long as you have. Well, I think now I need to go get some of that Jack Daniel. <laughs> 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 oh, you've been awesome. <laughs> no. My goodness. Thank you all so much. Hugs and kisses. Everybody drive safe. Be good. Okay? Thank We're you. We're done. Am I done? You are done. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, God. All right. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week on Tail Lights with the Bombs.